welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charan विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया in this course we are focusing on the three types of samasas stated in the paninian grammar and also the paninian grammatical tradition namely the avyayi bhava samasa the bahuvrihi samasa and the dvandva samasa currently we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa this is an extremely important type of samasas in sanskrit the features of avyayi bhava samasa can be represented in the form of an equation mentioned on this particular slide where we have x and y as two independent and separate entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent these x and y they are semantically however are related now the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and bring out an output as one unit which is xy so xy is a one unit which becomes a part of the sentence as such now xy is one unit in terms of the form as well as the meaning as well as the accent so xy has got three important features aika padya aika arthya and aika swarya ek padata ek arthata and ek swarata now this xy which has got these two constituents x and y amongst them x operates as the head of the unit xy both formally as well as semantically now in the avyayi bhava samasa x which is occupying the initial position always is an avyaya now this influences the overall formal state of xy as well because xy is also termed as an avyaya xy is an avyayi bhava samasa and avyayi bhava samasa is also stated to be an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha 1141 of the ashtadhyayi of panini so xy is an avyaya now the term avyayi bhava turns to be significant over here because y is not an avyaya so xy cannot be called 
an avyaya, but now it is termed as avyaya. And so anavyayam, avyayam bhavati avyayi bhavaha. This is how X formally acts as the head of the avyayi bhava samasa. Also, the meaning of X, namely avyaya, will act as the head when XY is semantically related with any other word in the sentence. And therefore, X is marked with the bold characters on this particular slide. These are the features of the avyayi bhava samasa that we have studied so far and we have been studying for some time now. Some of these features are mentioned repeatedly primarily because they should be highlighted regularly and because of this highlighting the student should get them into his or her system without too much effort. That is the aim of this particular repetition. In the Ashtadhyayi, the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is treated at different places in different ways. For example, the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or the compound prescribing sutras stating specific particular conditions under which the Avyayi Bhava Samasa takes place from 215 which is Avyayi Bhavaha, up to 2121, which is Anyapadarthecha Saudnyayam. This is a section of rules in which we find sutras stating the prescription of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Incidentally, 2122 is Tatpurushaha. From 2122 onwards, the sutras prescribing the Tatpurusha Samasa begin. And we have studied these sutras in the first course on Samasa in this particular series. And then we have one more small section from 54107 up to 54112 in which the Samasanta Pratyaya is stated, is prescribed. These are the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras, sutras which prescribe the suffix to be added at the end of the Samasa. And then Swara Vidhayaka Sutras are there, for example, 6 to 121. This is how Avyayi Bhava Samasa is treated in the Ashtadhyayi. Right now we are focused on the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras. So we have been studying them one by one. We have already studied Avyayi Bhavaha and then the big sutra Avyayam Vibhakti Samipa Samruddhi Vridhyartha Bhavatyaya Samprati Shabda Pradurbhava Paschadhyathana Purvya Yogapadya Sadrishya Sampatti Sakalyanta Vachaneshu. And then we also studied Yatha Asadrashe and Yavadavadharane. Let us proceed further and study the next sutras. 219 is Supratina Matrarthe. There are three padas in this particular sutra Sup, Pratina, and Matrarthe. Sup is 1 slash 1. So this becomes Upasarjana by the sutra. Prathama Niradishtam Samasa Upasarjanam and so it occupies the initial position of the Samasa by Upasarjanam Purvam. Then Pratina is 3 slash 1 of the word Prati which means together with the word Prati. It is to be noted here that the pattern is slightly changed in this particular Sutra. So far Avyayam which was in Prathama was continued in every sutra and so because avyaya is in prathama 
it used to occupy the initial position of the samasa. Prati also is an avyaya. However, in this sutra, it is not mentioned in Prathama. Prati is mentioned in Trutiya and therefore the difference in this particular sutra and the output generated by this particular sutra is that the avyaya, namely Prati, does not occupy the initial position of the samasa. Whereas the other interrelated subanta does occupy the initial position of the samasa, avyayi bhava samasa. This is the difference. Now, matrartha is 7 slash 1 of matrartha. Matrartha is matra artha, artha or meaning of the word matra in the sense of less amount. Matra means binduhu, stokam, alpam. These are all the synonyms. Matra, binduhu, stokam, alpam. Small amount, less amount, a drop. That is what the word matra stands for. The words continued are avyayam, sahasupa, samasaha, avyayi bhavaha, and samartha padavidhi from 211. Avyayam from 216. This gets transformed into trutiya, however, avyayena. Sahasupa continues from 214. Samasaha continues from 213, Avyayi Bhavaha continues from 215. So the meaning of the sutra available to us is the following. Any Subanta is compounded with another semantically related Avyaya Subanta namely Prati when less amount is the sense conveyed by the compound and the resultant Samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, any subanta sup is compounded with samasyate, another semantically related avyaya subanta prati. Supa saha pratina samasyate, when less amount matrarthe is the sense conveyed by the compound. And the resultant samasa, samasaha, is called avyayi bhava, avyayi bhavaha. This is an exception to the general rule that an avyaya or indeclinable occupies the initial position of the samasa or the compound. Here the avyaya is occupying the final position of the compound. This is why it is an exception. Let us look at the example. So the meaning to be conveyed is there is less amount of vegetable. Asti atra kinchit shakam. There is very little amount of vegetable in this. Asti atra kinchit shakam. This is the laukika vigraha. So now this gets transformed into shaka plus su plus prati plus su. Prati here denotes asti atra kinchit, the less amount. Because prati is stated in trutiya, it does not occupy the initial position, rather the word sup occupies the initial position. Prati occupies the final position of the compound. So we have shaka plus su plus prati plus su as the alaukika vigraha. Then samasa saudhnya takes place, then the pratipadika saudhnya also takes place, then we apply supodhatu pratipadika yoho 2471 and delete both the supratyayas, namely both the sus. So we have shaka plus zero plus prati plus zero. And when we join them together, we get shaka prati as the finally derived compound output. When we use it in the sentence, we add the sup suffix su, shaka prati plus su, and then because shaka prati is an avyaya, we apply the sutra avyayadap supaha 2482, 
which deletes su and so we get the word shakaprati as the subanta form from shakaprati which is a compound which means asti atra kinchit shakam now in the absence of the semantic condition matra less amount when that is not intended the compound does not take place for example when you have vriksham prati vidyutate vidyut here the word prati is used it is also semantically related with vriksham because it indicates that the word vriksha and its meaning is the mark or the sign where the lightning shines so it is the lakshana and therefore vriksham has got the dvitiya vibhakti prati has become karma pravachaniya because of the sutra lakshanitham bhuta khyana bhaga vipsasu prati paryana vaha and then because of the sutra karma pravachaniya yukte dvitiya vriksha has got the dvitiya vibhakti and that is how vriksha and prati are semantically interrelated in spite of this because the sense is not that of matra vriksha and prati are not compounded in this particular sutra the lightning shines where the tree is that is the meaning of the sentence vriksham prati vidyutate vidyut here vriksha and prati are not compounded because there is absence of the semantic condition stated in this particular sutra namely matra arth this we must note in the previous sutra 219 the word prati na occurred in the tritiya vibhakti as a result prati which is an avyaya did not occupy the initial position of the avyayi bhava samasa which is the general practice something similar happens in 2110 the sutra is aksha shalaka sankhya parina aksha shalaka sankhya parina so there are two padas in the sutra aksha shalaka sankhya which is prathama bahuvachana 1/3 and therefore the padas stated in this big compound aksha shalaka sankhya they become upasarjana by the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and they will occupy the initial position in the samasa on account of the sutra upasarjanam purvam there are three constituents of the samasa aksha shalaka and sankhya now the second pada in the sutra is parina which is 3/1 of pari and the word means with the word pari words continued are avyayam 216 sahasupa from 214 samasaha from 213 avyayi bhavah from 215 and of course samarthap padavidhi from 211 avyayam is transformed into avyayena now the meaning of the sutra is the following the subanta aksha shalaka and sankhya are compounded with another semantically related avyaya subanta pari and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava i repeat the subanta sub aksha shalaka and sankhya aksha shalaka sankhya are compounded samasyante with another semantically related avyaya subanta pari parina avyayena samarthena subantena sah and the resultant samasa samasaha is called avyayi bhava avyayi bhavah now it must be noted here that the output samasa is used in a very very specific environment that of the game of dice 
एज द ट्रेडिशनल कॉमेंटेटर्स से कि तब व्यवहारे और द्यूतव व्यवहारे समासोयमिष्यते वी डोंट यूज दिस आउटपुट इन एनी अदर कॉन्टेक्स्ट बट द द्यूतव व्यवहार द गेम ऑफ टाइस और कितब व्यवहार द गेम ऑफ टाइस एंड दैट टू देर इज फर्दर स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड दैट टू ओनली इन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ डिफीट और लॉस सो कितब व्यवहार और द्यूतव व्यवहार इज सपोज टू जेनरेट टू रिजल्ट लॉस और डिफीट और विन एंड दिस पर्टिक्युलर समास इंडिकेट्स और डिनोट्स द स्टेट ऑफ लॉस विपाते और पराजय एव दिस इज द स्पेसिफिकेशन स्पेसिफाइड कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन विच दिस आउटपुट जनरेटेड बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर सूत्र इज टू बी यूज लेट अस स्टडी द स्पेसिफिक कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन सम मोर डिटेल A game of dice called panchika is played with five dices. So panchika naam dyutam panchabhir akshayi shalaka bhirva bhavati. Now when all five dice fall in the same manner either facing up or down the thrower wins. Otherwise the thrower loses that means if one amongst the five dice falls in a different manner the thrower loses that's what is stated in the sanskrit commentaries quoted on the slide yadi akshaha shalakava krutsnaha all uttanaha facing facing up avanchova or facing down patanti तदा पातयिता जयति ओनली देन द थ्रोअर वेन्स अन्यथा अन्यथा मीन्स वेन ऑल कृत्स्ना आर नॉट उत्ता और कृत्स्ना आर नॉट अवांच देन द थ्रोअर पातयिता पराजयते देन द थ्रोअर लूजेस इति स्थिति दिस इज द रूल दिस इज हाउ द गेम इज प्लेड नाउ in order to denote this loss or this defeat the compounds compound is used and various compounds generated by this sutra are used let us see the example the dice behave differently or in opposite manner akshena viparitam vrittam which means that all five did not fall in the same manner either facing up or facing down perhaps four faced down and one faced up or something like that akshena idam na tatha vrittam yatha purvam jaye so in the game of dice initially you win when all five fall in the same manner but now the times have changed and now the dice is falling in different or opposite manner that means not all are falling in the same direction akshena idam na tatha vrittam yatha purvam jaye so now this laukika vigraha akshena viparitam vrittam gets transformed in the form of an alaukika vigraha aksha plus ta plus pari plus su since parena is mentioned in trutiya even though pari is an avyay it does not occupy the initial position of this avyayi bhav samasa aksha however occupies the initial position so aksha plus ta plus pari plus su is the alaukika vigraha that we have here this gets the samasa saudnya and then it gets the pratipadika saudnya and then we apply the sutra supo dhatu pratipadika yoho to delete both the sups so we have aksha plus 0 plus pari plus 0 so we have aksha pari after joining them together as the finally derived 
compound output. Now, when we use this samasa in the sentence, we add the suffix su in order to make it a pada. So we have akshapari plus su. And then we apply the sutra avyayadap supaha, which deletes the su after an avyaya. And avyayi bhava samasa is an avyaya because of the sutra avyayi bhavascha. So we have akshapari plus su, and then su gets deleted. And so we have akshapari plus zero, and finally we have akshapari as the pada to be used in the sentence. What it means is that jaye yatha parivartitavyam tatha na parivrtam. The dice which should fall in a particular manner, which would result in the win, the dice did not fall in the same manner. That is what is the meaning of akshapari. Similarly, shalakaya viparitam vrittam, in the same sense, that is the laukika vigraha, and the alaukika vigraha is shalaka plus ta, plus pari plus su, and this then becomes samasa, and then it becomes a pratipadika, and then we apply the sutra sopodhatup pratipadika yoho, and delete both the su. So we have shalaka plus zero, plus pari plus zero. So we have shalaka pari as the finally derived compound output. And then when we use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su. So we have shalaka pari plus su. And then avyayadap supaha applies and deletes su. And so we have shalaka pari as the finally derived compound output, which means shalakaya viparitam Vrittam. The dice behaved in an opposite manner, resulting in the loss. Now, the word Sankhya stated in the Sutra refers to the words meaning Sankhya, Eka, Dvi, Tri, Chatur, etc. Now, when the meaning to be conveyed is differently or opposite behaved by only one. So, four out of five behaved similarly, only one of them behaved differently. When this is to be stated, and when the defeat is to be the meaning can to be conveyed, we say, ekena viparitam rattam. This is the laukika vigraha. And then we have eka plus ta, plus pari plus su as the alaukika vigraha. Then samasa saudhnya takes place and pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then we apply sopodhatup pratipadika yoho to delete both the sups. So we have eka plus zero plus pari plus zero and when we bring them together, we get the finally derived compound output namely eka pari. When we decide to use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su to it. So we have ekapari plus su. And then we apply the sutra avyayadap supaha and delete the suffix su. And so we get the form ekapari. Which means only one amongst the five dice behaved differently, thereby resulting in the loss. Similarly, when we have the meaning differently or opposite behaved by only two, dvabhyam viparitam rattam, we follow the same process. The meaning here is that two of them, two of the five, behave differently. So we have dvi plus bhyam plus pari plus su as the alaukika vigraha. Then we get the samasa saudhnya and then the Pratipadika Saudhnya, because of which then we apply the Sutra Sopo Dhatup Pratipadika Yoho and delete both the Sups. So we have V plus 0 plus Pari plus 0 and when we join them together, we get the form Dvipari. Then we add the suffix Su after Dvipari when we decide to use it in the sentence. 
So this su gets deleted because of the sutra avyayadap supaha. And so we get the form dvipari, which means only two amongst the five ties behave differently, thereby resulting in the loss. Now the next example is differently or opposite behaved by three. So tribhihi viparitam vrittam. And here we have three plus bhis plus pari plus su as the alaukika vigraha. So we get the samasa saudhnya and we get the pratipadika saudhnya. So we apply supodhatu pratipadika yohu and we get three plus zero plus pari plus zero and the finally derived compound output is tripari and then we add the suffix su tripari plus su and we delete it by the sutra avyayadap supaha so we have tripari plus zero that is tripari which means three amongst the five dice behaved differently perhaps they fell with faces up or face down and the remaining two behaved differently thereby resulting in the loss and finally we have the example where the meaning to be conveyed is differently behaved or opposite behaved by four chatur bihi viparitam vrittam so this is the laukika vigraha and the alaukika vigraha is chatur plus vis plus pari plus su and then samasa saudhnya takes place the pratipadika saudhnya then takes place so we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete both the sups so we have chatur plus zero plus pari plus zero and so we have chatur and pari and then this ra becomes the visarga so we have chatuhu and pari and then finally this visarga becomes sha and so we have chatush pari as the finally derived compound output idudupadhasya cha pratyayasya is the sutra which substitutes sha so now we have chatush pari plus su and then this su gets deleted because of the sutra avyayadap subaha and so we get the form chatush pari to be used in the sentence what it means is that the four amongst the five ties behaved differently thereby resulting in the loss probably the four they fell with the face up and only one fell with the face down or the vice versa but it resulted in the loss this is a very specific semantic condition the game of dice and that too the loss that has become the subject of this particular sutra so this entire process of semantics is summarized in a verse available in the tradition which is quoted on this particular slide it says panchasu tveka rupasu jaya eva bhavishyati when the five shalakas or dice they are eka rupa this will result in the victory or win akshadayah tritiyantah purvoktasya yathana tat however when aksha etc when they do not behave in the similar uniform fashion purvokt then then they get compounded with the word pari and then we have the samasa kitava vyavahare cha ekatve akshashalak yoho so kitava vyavahara is what is the 
specific semantic condition that we have here. This is the explanation of Sutra 2.1.10, very specific semantic condition. Next we continue how the processing of the Avyabhava Samasa happens with remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras and we study that and how this process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence. This is what we study in the subsequent sutras which come in the next lectures. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.